All right, everybody, welcome back to the Captain's Draft 4 Minor. We are here with Infamous versus Midas Club Elite, a best of three series, uh, and we're into game number two here in the upper bracket. Midas Club Elite taking the first game pretty handedly. Really good stuff there, honestly. Just great picks all around. Infamous looking perhaps a bit uncomfortable on some of the heroes they picked. As we enter game number two, though, Midas Club Elite, we'll see what they pick, we'll see what they ban, and if they can take the second game here. Thank you so much for joining us here on Moonduck TV. My name is Mont. With me is Basekip. And uh, what do we have here in terms of heroes, my friend? It's it's looking a bit more interesting, I think. Yeah, this this is a kind of weird draft pool. Uh, once again, not that many supports. I guess there's CM, Lena, Rubik. Uh, it's bad. Oh, there's a Ventral Spirit in there as well. I guess it's not that bad in terms of the support situation. Not that many defensive supports, even though there are some heroes that are really good with defensive supports, like the Huskar and the Death Prophet. I would not be at all shocked to see the Death Prophet picked up out of this draft. I think it's one of the maybe one of the stronger heroes, but this Venomancer is no big surprise at all. I mean, he's very popular this patch, and I think also very good against a couple of the other heroes in the pool, like the Ursa, TA, um, even, well, I think even like the Abaddon to a, to a certain extent, even though right. that hero is not very popular. So first pick Venno, maybe more in the wheelhouse of, of Infamous. Yeah, it makes sense. And as you called it, Death Prophet's going to be picked up by Midas Club Elite. <clears throat> and uh, the Kunko to follow up as well, interestingly enough, a four position support, mm -hmm. very uh, useful here. So good stuff for Midas Club Elite with their first two picks. Yeah, it's a. I mean, the Kunk is kind of a defensive support. If you can get the rum on Death Prophet, makes her ridiculously difficult to kill. Could just kind of run through the middle of the team. But I think Kunkka also, in general, pretty good against the Venomancer. Being able to delay a lot of that poison damage is always going to be really useful. And if a Kunkka has a good start, it's not that unreasonable for him to build like a mech or a pipe from position four, which is very, very useful. Also pretty good at punishing a, a fairly immobile hero like the Venno, right? They, they are going to buy some force stabs, and that is going to help out a little bit, but uh, the catch from the Kunkka should still be pretty good. And their lineup in general, even with just these two picks, is insanely difficult to escape from if you commit into a fight as Infamous. Just going to go for the lore combo as they get the, the Crystal Maiden Tusk. Yeah, it's a bit cold for them, but they will have the combination to come. So there's just some interesting four-position supports. You have the Kunkka, you have the Tusk on the other side, so... Yeah, I mean, some highly skilled heroes, and hopefully it should be interesting to watch. But uh, for now, we'll see how it goes. Venomancer, Crystal Maiden, Tusk. What else is available here as we have one more pick for Midas Club Elites? What do they need? They need a support, obviously, safe laner, off laner. So there's still a lot here to be determined by Midas Club Elite with these picks. Yep. Okay. They're going to grab themselves an Ursa. It... The like Ursa versus Venomancer, I think, is interesting because if the like if the Venno survives and gets the right items, then I think he kites the Ursa to no like you know to a ridiculous degree. But Ursa is actually pretty decent at bursting Venomancer down if you have that initial catch. Um, this this Ursa pick is is somewhat surprising to me, but I think it's definitely a hero that is a hundred percent in HFN's comfort zone. Right. But I guess that's that's a big reason why they're they're picking it up here because I don't I don't think it's particularly great against the infamous heroes. You're gonna get kited by Crystal Maiden slow slash frostbite. There's the tusk for save. There's gonna be the frozen sigil, which is a little bit annoying. So it's gonna be very important that he gets in there, blows somebody up, and then kind of leaves the rest of the fight to the death prophet uh, slash the rest of the other heroes. As we do have an Abaddon picked up, I think. Like saving heroes or heroes that can give Death Prophet a little bit more survivability are always uh, very much appreciated for DP since she scales so well. If you if you give her just that little bit of extra health, so you can't burst her, that's where she becomes an absolute monster in fights. But it's not always the easiest for her to itemize her survivability herself. So I like this Abaddon pickup quite a bit. Uh, their lockdowns. Uh, a little bit weak, but it's just that's just the nature of this pool. There isn't, there aren't really a whole bunch of huge AOE disables or or solid stuns. So you just kind of have to play around it. It's it's still pretty hard to fight into Midas Club Elite, even if they don't have the most disables in the world. Like you said, I think that this is a very good pick. A bad, and obviously, like you just talked about, helping the Death Prophet survive. But uh, we'll we'll see how Infamous respond. What they need to get here. You have a pretty you've, you 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 kind of have some good tower pressure with the Death Prophet as well. 
So maybe you start five manning pretty early if you're Midas Complete. I'm not sure if that's their game plan, but they probably could do it with these heroes. Yeah, I think they definitely could. That, that seems to be definitely a big way for them to be playing here. Infamous, what, core eventual spirit. So they're also going to have some pretty decent push. Gives them a swap save as well, potentially. I think the eventual spirit is also kind of underrated against saving supports or saving heroes in general. Like if, if you're this death, if you're the death prophet this game, and then you get swapped away from your team by a like a core eventual spirit swap, so a really long range swap, then it shouldn't be easy for Midas Club to kind of catch up and save the Death Prophet, which is where that, that might be the best way for them to actually burst her. Just swap her into the middle of the whole team and then straight into a walrus punch, try and try and focus her down. Uh, but they do need a little bit more damage, and uh, I think that yeah, the invoker suits the bill just fine. Yeah, they have a lot of they have they have team fight, they have potential push, they have control. That swap and, and killing the death prophet is going to be huge, and, and just burst them down, especially if the abaddon is not close. And, and that, that's going to be the tough part, though, is is trying to kill somebody quickly while the abaddon's nearby, and he's just sort of in the middle of things, I suppose. But yeah, so Midas Club probably just take like. I guess begrudgingly take Rubik here. It's not bad against Venno. It's not bad against uh, Invoker. And I don't know if you necessarily want Rubik playing as your hard five, but it seems like a. I think I think it's probably the best support left. Yeah. What else is still available? Like, I can't see. Lena. <laughs> yeah, Lena. I get. Uh, it almost uh, feels like it has to be the Rubik at this point, right? I mean, what else could there? Yeah. Short of something weird. Yeah, okay, good there call. There he is. I was looking at it, and I was like, what? All right, that makes sense, I suppose. They will grab the heroes, though. Rubik will come out. Could be kind of tough in that uh, that five-position role with, of course, the, the Kunkka playing the four, but uh, we'll see how it goes. I, I think Midas complete. If they can get off to a fast start, they can easily take this game, but uh, we will see if Infamous could turn this bad boy around and get this into a game three here. And what do you think? I mean, what do you? whose draft do you favor more now that you you see all five heroes? Uh, I think if Infamous play it in the right way, I actually like their draft a lot. One of the big things I've noticed about Death Prophet lineups recently is that the hero does... If you don't snowball really hard, I feel like the hero does eventually stall out. And that often happens at the high ground. And I think a big reason for that is, you know, one, the high ground is really difficult to break these days. But the way that it's difficult to break is really... Makes it really hard for Death Prophet. You've got the bonus armor aura on all of your heroes because you're standing next to your tier three. So you don't care as much about the exorcism because of that. And then you also don't care so much about the exorcism because of the... Because you've got the shrines to back you up as well. And so I think if they play it right, then they should just be able to stall this game get to the point where the Invoker and the Venomancer can hold the high ground kind of just by default. I don't think Midas Elite's heroes are that well equipped to be able to to go and end like a, a somewhat even game or even a game with only a, a slight lead. And I think that's where Infamous farm up and kind of make the comeback. So that that's my thought, but I think it could also happen that Midas Elite just get 10 kills in the first five minutes and then just snowball and win the whole game before the invoker even comes remotely online especially since it's not that easy for them i don't think it's that easy this game to set up sunstrike kills oh speaking of which i'm gonna have the telekinesis another earth shock to come through he's got another in threes i think this cm's dead yeah she should be one more auto attack yeah even the gale can't save her so he tried warding he didn't even get the ward down i don't even know if they know that uh, but uh, that is a huge kill, actually. Make sure that you don't get the ward down. You get a ward of your own towards this tier 1 tower in the top lane. Secure the kill. And that will help get them uh, snowballed, as you talked about. That, that's one way to do it, just getting those kills. Yeah, did, did HFN get the... Who got the first blood in the previous game? I'm trying I to remember. I want to say it was HFN, but I don't know. I can't remember. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. But, yeah, another good start for him. Definitely the the kind of build-around player on the team. And, ooh, this is this is nasty. Starting with the Ursa just straight up starting with Boots. Yeah. Boots, Windlace. I, I don't know what you do about this. And big little bit of a wraparound here from the Rubik Kunk. I do need to be careful, though. Uh, oh, this is very dangerous. There's three heroes here. King RD's in trouble. Torrent will hit onto the Venom. No, it's the Telkinesis that brings him down to the low ground, which was nicely played. That might have kept them alive. They're slowed to oblivion, <laughs> by the way. They are the slowest moving heroes I maybe have ever seen at the beginning of this game. 
But they will make it out somehow because the the Rubik telekinesis was on point. Uh, definitely good. It was not a not a bad torrent either. Kind of keeping the Venomancer a little bit locked down, at least saving them some damage. I don't think they were they were about to die. Uh, this Invoker versus Death Prophet matchup is not that great for the Invoker. Um, does have to be a little bit careful. There's not a ton that he can do in this kind of situation where he just gets run at and has a Spirit Siphon thrown on him. Just kind of has to run back. Oh, Stinger's dead. Stinger is that in a like. lot of trouble. He, I think Duster's... Oh, they're waiting for oh. the deny. Can they get it? Nicely done. Good timing. They'll take a Centaur Conqueror's Tom for good measure, but... Meanwhile, bottom, Magic Missile coming out. The Abad and the Phytic Shield was up. Tavo, they shouldn't have enough damage. With the Ice Shards, now they've got the control. That's what they needed. Another Phytic is up in three. Rather, right now, actually. And uh, Tavo actually doesn't even need it to survive. So, a couple of attempted ganks on both sides of the map, but Midas Club Elite are the only ones that are successful. Yeah. There is always that Sunstrike to be looking out for, so Tavo does have to be a bit careful on bottom. But so far, things looking pretty good for Midas Elite. But like I was saying, I think the, I think the game plan for Infamous is... Um, well, Tavo dead without the Sunstrike, but... Uh, the game plan for Infamous is very much kind of get as much as you can in the early game, but then you're really playing for that bend but don't break strategy where you can kind of uh, hang on. If they, I think if they get to the point where they have the Invoker level 25, I don't know if Midas Elite can ever high ground. Maybe if they abandon to the right build and then he's actually the siege engine for the team just sitting in front hitting some uh, buildings. They don't want to get to that point. They, they really no. don't want to have to do that. And uh, we'll see if they can hold off. It, it feels kind of like last game where it's sort of the same thing where Infamous are like, we have got a PL, we've got a Midas on our, our Life Stealer. Oh my god, HFN, you're crazy. He needs like two auto attacks, but he, he just he's too slow with the Gale. Tower hits are doing some serious work. He does have a salve, he'll probably wait on it, but... Uh, Rotation mid. Sunstrike, Mandy, there's the Ice Shards. Huge kill coming out, it looks like. And they will give it to Papita as well. They all back up, just let him get the last auto attack. It's very big. The Ice Shards was sick. Like, pulled him away from the creeps, no Sunstrike splitting at all. A very important kill for the Invoker to pick up, and some very important follow-up farm for him to be grabbing. Yeah. You know, eventual Spirit getting run down a little bit by Tavo, though. He knows the supports are all the way over at mid, so applying a lot of pressure in the meantime. So the two kills went at the start to Midas Club Elite, but this is a big deal. The fact that they were able to get even this much here for Pepita. He's already a level up. Mandy's going to try to man fight. Alacrity is available for Pepita. He doesn't have anything else invoked. He's going to go for Sunstrike. He'll pop the Alacrity. Another rotation coming in, but the cook is here to help. KRD ready to go on Schofield, but they will back themselves up in a way. Uh, they're just kind of dancing around. Good try from Schofield. South coming out. Mandy, does he have Spirit Siphon? No, so it's cool down for two Not seconds. No, three seconds. Uh... I mean, Schofield's just harassing him and keeping him out of He's lane. He's punching him, dude. Yeah, he <laughs> really is. Speaking of getting punched, Stinger's getting clawed by HFN top. This is a dive under the tier 2 tower, which feels a lot like last game, and Stinger's just dead. So, that's a classic. That's an HFN play for sure. Uh, this Ventral Spirit is farming really poorly, I, I have to say. He's, he's got the same CS as the Abaddon, which is... Not really good news. Uh, at least Invoker is doing decently, but like we're saying, it's going to take time for the Invoker to really come online. Right. Uh, at least Schofield's getting some good levels. The supports are reasonably positioned. This Crystal Maiden, looking like she's going to take some damage from King RD. Oh, that one more auto attack? Wow. King RD. Huge rotation. He's level three. That gets the support off the map now. And All right. Might as well be getting a couple more kills. Yeah, they're applying a lot of pressure. The vision game for both teams is a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit lackluster. This, what do you make of this observer ward in the river from uh, Infamous? I guess this is just the, we really hope to scout the ganks towards mid. Wow, that ward. is quite the interesting ward. Hey, I think it's just because, like, maybe they're they're looking at Midas Elite and they're thinking this is an area where you're often going to pop a smoke, right? Yeah. You're going to come down here as the two supports. And then you're going to think to yourself, oh, okay, if there's a mid ward, that's the edge of that. A sun strike? Mandy, yeah, going to get dropped. Nice. They commit three heroes to the gank, but again, the big thing is Pepita continues to just increase his advantage over this Death Prophet. 36 last hits to the 22 of the DP, DP not to mention what is a one level advantage as of right now. So that's, that's huge, because like you said, they need to get this Invoker started. And yeah, it'll take him a while to get pretty big, but 
this is one way to help him get to that point. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if this where this comes back to bite them is the Abaddon's farm. If he can potentially get out of control this game as a result of not really being uh, shepherded out of the lane. But Schofield and uh, SL are also make, taking some time to come down towards bottom, and so they should be able to grab another kill here. Sunstrike should hit. Yeah, Frostbite came in with a magic missile as well. Perfect timing. Doesn't get the kill for the Invoker, but it will help them secure it down bottom lane. So, all right, some good rotations. I mean, the, the CM Tusk, the rotations are, are on point. The only thing they're really not accomplishing is dealing with the Zerza top lane, who's getting really good farm. But the Death Prophet, again, not getting much. Still Ooh, pretty King far. King RD is being scouted. Snapped and up. Skill fields here. dead. Absolutely. Torrent will come out. Spirit Siphon, Raindrops coming in. Mandy's trying to man fight this, but out of Spirit Siphon charges, and Pepita's just going to back up in a way. There's no way he can get the kill. Mandy will turn on to Schofield, who's also still pretty Those tanky. Shards. Yeah, and the Deafening Blast uh, just missing. Wow. That would have been crazy. <laughs> the Deafening Blast may have pushed him out of the shard. Uh, yeah. Anyway, he had hit, so. A little, a little bit weird, but yeah, they got that kill. The... This is something that we haven't seen for a bit, but the Invoker with the Arcane Aura actually able to... Maybe maybe do a little bit better in this lane as a result of just spamming the alacrity nonstop. Well, I was oh. not expecting that kill. Oops. No, nah, me me neither. He's dead. Schofield heading towards top. HFN, lots of pressure under this tier one. They've lined this up really nicely with the catapult wave. Just to push things in and uh, Venomancer's now got three points up in the plague wards, so this game's looking fairly secure at this stage, just gonna be alternating between the lane. And this little tri jungle, but oop, HFN on the prowl. Yeah, they are running in. They've got phase ready. Ursa close to uh, his next item. They're going to run right in for Pepita. Telekinesis is going to be there, and Rage comes out. They really want this kill, and they'll find it. That's a huge one. Now they're going to turn on Schofield. If they can get two, it would be gigantic. The snowball is coming out. They'll back up. It'll be on Demandy. Can they chase him down? They need another Crypt Storm. They'll find it. A couple more auto attacks. He's at 15 HP. HFN can run him down. Ice Shards at three. Can he get this uh, block off and keep himself alive? He misses the Earth Shock, and Schofield... He will live. The Crypt Swarm not in time. If they got that second kill, would have been huge. They do take down Pepita, which is great, but uh, they could have gotten more. Yeah, that's done by. I was wondering if he was going to be forced to like shards himself up onto the high ground or, or something like that, but uh, he's, he's going to be okay. Uh, a little bit more harassment being traded down bottom, and oh, the Prophet dead again. Yeah, they'll take down Mandy, and then, of course, the top lane. We saw Stinger go down there as well. Ah, uh, Pepita feels like he's getting pretty big. He's not the top in net worth, but this is before he has Midas, and he's, like, almost top of the net worth at this point, which is pretty frightening, yeah, in my opinion. Yeah, it's going to be a very timely Midas for him. And the other thing is that his, his other cores don't really take up that much room in terms of farm, and they don't... I mean, the, the Venomancer kind of farms the jungle, but the Vengeful Spirit doesn't really at all. And so there's going to be tons of farm for him on this map. And he's got the Crystal Maiden aura helping him out, so he can afford to even start meteoring creep waves a little bit earlier, that kind of a thing. Oh, Tavo's just he's running in there. down the Venge. Yeah, he was ready to go. And uh, he's going to pop the borrowed time after the Magic Missile comes out. He does have the Curse of Avernus chasing him down. Miss Quill will hit. That'll break the raindrop. X marks coming in, followed up by the torrent. A lot of damage. Aphotic Shield needs to break to do even more. Snowball save coming out. Where will they head? It's going to be right on top of Carrier D. Ice Shards coming out. Doesn't block. And it actually looks like this Vengeful Spirit's going to get out. They turn on to Excel. They actually like, need more lockdown. X marks torrent will hit. There's the Magic Missile. They want to turn this, but maybe it was too aggressive from the Venge. He will get the Abaddon, but it's a two for one trade. In the meantime, HFN takes the tier one tower top lane as well. That is some that's some sick levels for King RD. Off of that, the Abaddon already dead. Picks up the kills. Um, Midas Club still doing a good job of keeping up the pressure, but like we're saying, Invoker just kind of farming away. I'm very curious to see what the Abaddon's build is going to be. It looks like he's actually okay. He's just queuing up the Blads at this point, so nothing nothing too crazy greedy. I know I know that in the past we have seen like. Midas Radiance, Radiance yeah. from offlane Abaddon's, but I think he, I think this is the right kind of idea because like we're saying, I think if this game goes late, it actually gets really tough for Midas Elite. So the earlier they can take down the Roche, the earlier they can just continue to press their advantage, the, the better this is going to be for them. And yeah. speaking of that, they got a gank coming in. Here we go, X marks. You might die again. 
Vengeful Spirit in trouble. They blow him away. They've got the overpower, the Fury Swipes. Ghost Ship will hit, maybe. They don't even need it. They don't need it. They're going to take points. the Tier 1 tower. Style points. <laughs> That's true. It's, it's all style points. <laughs> I mean, this is exactly what they need, but they cannot lose Manny in the mid lane. It looks like they are going to Ice Shard, Spirit Siphon will not keep him alive. The amount of damage from Alacrity, Meatball, Cold Snap, plus Schofield is insane. And Mandy continues to have one of the roughest games I've seen from him. He is below the Venomancer, who, by the way, has not had a good game himself. But uh, that's pretty bad at this point. Yeah, uh, this Death Prophet is a bit... Well, very, very behind, actually. No phase boots yet, just kind of... The double null, magic wand. I wonder if Midas Elite are going to go for two towers here at bottom. Uh, it looks like they might they might lose their tier one top if yeah. they choose to go for that. Oh, uh, if they can find Vengeful Spirit again, it would be huge. The Enrage will come out. HFN Mask of Madness is going to try to heal up. He has Miss Coil help coming in from Abaddon as well. And now that they've gotten the kill on the bench for a third time in a row, and they have a siege creep by the way, which is perfectly timed, they will get yep. this tower. I, I think. Siege Creep, Curse of Avernus, so sick. And they're going to so get mid, push. too? Exorcism from Mandy? They're right back in it, baby. Well, maybe not yet. Here comes the Invoker. Good Ice Shards. Sunstrike, it's going to be split. It will hit the half the Snowball to come out as well. Spell was stolen. It's going to be that Snowball. They're going to look for the kill. Papita's low. They've got HF fed. He's so low. The Ghost Ship comes out. They're going to fight, too. Yes, they will lose Papita. Or, excuse me, HF fed. Maybe not. Schofield's still alive. Ice Shards coming in. He's juking and jiving in the trees. And KRD in trouble. The rub is going to run out here in a moment. And they will find, too. Maybe going a bit too hard. Mandy coming in. Exorcism is only up for a little while longer. They've got the Spirit. Siphon. There's the snowball, the Crypt Swarm. Magic Missile stolen as well. There's the snowball save. Is it going to be enough? I'm not sure. Swap in the Mist Coil. That's a Singer. The Crypt Swarm, it's not enough. Oh my god, you've got to be kidding me. So uh, many nice plays from the supports in, in that last little fight. Especially Schofield. Snowball saves. Good shard blocks. They do end up saving the tier 2 tower, which I think is pretty important, but this is going to end up being some space for HFN, who has a Yule Scepter queued up on hmm. his Ursa. That is interesting. Alright, he's enraged. Don't they're, get bashed. They're going to come in. They've got the Alacrity. They're about to drop the Meatball down. Sunstrike's going to hit the Meatball. HFN! He popped the Enrage oh, inside the, the Roche Pit, and they just blow him away. They're going to take Roche, too. Oh, Maybe that is... Stuck? Not stuck. good. Yeah, King Hardy's yep. in trouble. Freezing field coming out. No way to cancel it. Ghost ship coming in too little too late. We'll hit onto Pepita and the CM as well. But Pepita might be fine. Deafening Blast coming out. There's the borrowed time. They need more damage. They don't have the Death Prophet Ultimate, but they have the Spirit Siphon. Magic Missile. The rum's still going to work. Schofield now in trouble. The Gale will come out. Good swap back. That was stolen by Duster. And they'll continue to chase. Ice Shards coming out. They will get the Aegis taken down, but... Other than that, they just get the Venge. Stinger, X marks, they have the Torrent. No, five seconds. No way to follow up on this, really. Snowball coming in onto the Illusions to keep Schofield alive. And uh, that that just was interesting for Mercer. He went in and raged and died, pretty much. Yeah, I guess he, he just dropped a little bit too low. Doing the Roche, decided that he needed to use the Enrage to heal back up. And then didn't manage to heal all the way back up to full. And Infamous were all over him. They knew exactly what was what was going on uh, with the pressure being applied bottom and that HFN was going to be looking for that Roshan opportunity. Even if they lost the Aegis, I think just getting the Roshan lasted and uh, taking it away from the enemy team is a really big deal. And this Death Prophet just continues to get comboed out of the game. Uh, Pepita's Invoker is getting very scared. These... Only 800 gold away from his eggs. Yeah, he's he's going to be deadly. This is before he's really on. E even with the eggs, he's still not quite where he wants to be. Like, one more item after that, and he could just start devastating, plus some levels, too. They need to keep Stinger alive, though. He's got to get chased down, earth-shocked, and destroyed, as they steal Gale as well. And the good news for Midas Club Elite is that they're taking these towers, or at least they're attempting to. You know, you might be losing a lot from your Death Prophet. You you only really have farm on HFM, but if you can get the towers and try to pressure high ground early enough, maybe things could go well for you. Yeah, they are still definitely on this... Need to just go, 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 go kind of game plan. Ursa dropping extremely low to these Ancients. HFN going to have to take a second to go and heal back up somewhere. Um, what other kind of item timings do they have coming out? Nothing really all that soon. So just Ursa working on this. Uh, Vlad's for Tavo. the Yule Scepter. Yeah, the, the Vlad's for Tavo is nice. But I don't know if that 
Like, it's not the big item gonna... you're looking for. Yeah, it just doesn't feel like it's going to start swinging the game too much. And they've already... The thing for Infamous is that they... I guess they've only taken the one tier one tower, so there isn't that much room for them to kind of rat, but the tier one mid is basically already dead. It's only going to take a, like a very mild push to bring that down. And Midas Elite, they are really trying to grab some more kills here. Yeah, he's mega dead. That, that yeah, they're going to like, deal with their jungle. Like, it's just so hard for him as the Venomancer. Even with them, you know, with, with Pepita as farmed as he is, they can't really save this Venomancer. They need Blink on the Tusk, and even then, it might not be easy. Uh. Yeah, I think Venno's job is just to continue making space. Uh, they really, they really got to get the D-Wards off on their, their jungle. Yo, why, what, what's this exorcism Yeah, what for? just... I heard the exorcism, but why? I guess... Uh, I guess they feel like they can't go and grab the Tier 2 easily. So, just going to use it for farming, kind of similar to how... You know, you might see Razor occasionally just kind of pop his ultimate to... Right. Not, not, not quite the same. I guess it's because he's got the Arcane Rune as well. It's oh, really big, I... Yeah, I didn't even motivated. notice that. Yeah. yeah, that would make sense. I was wondering. They have the scan, by the way, but the TP comes out in time as the Rubik is able to make it out. He stole Plague Wards, which is a great steal this game on the Rubik. Um, just making space himself. They pushed a lot of heroes back down bottom. In fact, they're looking for a target top, and they might find it. Although it is only Tavo. He's just going to go for the TP. He's out of there. There's no way to stop it. And uh, they'll force him back. Yeah. Mental Spirit did have a uh, Mask of Madness queued up a bit earlier, but just going to be going for a Shadow Blade now, it looks like. Uh, gives them a little bit more catch potential. You know, might be able to get a swap off and then still live. With the Shadow Blade shortly afterwards. Yeah. So, I don't mind this. Uh, actually, what is, is now queuing up Midas. He's still. Guys, we got this late game. What item he wants. But yeah, I think that's kind of the the view. If you're you're infamous, so like, okay, this invoker's our invoker's gonna put us on his back. So, I I don't know if that they need to go for Midas though. I think you can just kind of, yeah, he's he's back to the <laughs> he's he's back to the. He doesn't Shadow know Blade. what to do. It, no, I think it's because here's the thing: if if you're if you're gonna win late game, you're gonna win late game anyway. You're not gonna win late game because you have Midas. You're gonna win late game because you have like four four stabs to kite the Ursa, and the Death Prophet's not doing enough damage anymore. So I don't think they need to. I think going greedier just kind of jeopardizes their chances because it extends Midas Elite's window. Oh, oh if no, only they had a fine. way to stop it. That TP. They have the. They might have seen the courier and uh, looks like. Where's his Yules? Dude? Yeah, That's I know. The, the <laughs> he was building it too. He was, yeah. Now he has a Midas. Well, I'm sure that's a fine pickup for Midas Couple Elite. They lose the Rubik in the meantime. He plague warded up this triangle area, and uh, yeah, he died for it. And they clear out all his wards too. In the meantime, Tavo might get chased down. A Photic Shield will come out. He's got a haste rune on CM, but they will use the borrowed time, which will push him away. Which, by the way, Tavo is also building a Midas. So Midas Couple Elite, they understand Indeed. this invoker is huge. It's time to go late game of our own. But is is their late game better? I'm I'm just not sure. Like maybe 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 the like a six slot Abaddon tips the the balance in their favor, or maybe if the, if they go Midas's and the Ventral Spirit doesn't, because Vench has, has 3k gold. Indecision. Is, what is 3k? Yeah. Buy yeah, something. 3K. Yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> you could have Midas already. You could have had Midas. A few minutes You ago. could have had Midas and used it once already. You're losing out on your efficiency, Kotaro. Come yeah. on, buddy. And and Venomancer is queuing up a Midas. Oh, lordy, Mott. Here we go. All right, let me uh, start the clock go. watch, the stopwatch here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're going to be here for another hour and a half, probably, in this game. I will say, though, if Midas Club Elite managed to find a kill on Bapita once or twice, all of a sudden, that, that pretty much leads them into taking a tower, right? I mean, it feels like it has mm -hmm. to, because he is the top net worth. The, the, the Venge is half of his net worth, pretty much, or almost half of his net worth, and the Venomancer, pretty much the same. So, there is that luxury for Midas Club Elite, where if they can find that pick off the Invoker, which, by the way, is very difficult, especially when he gets this Yule Scepter. Yep. The smoke Schofield is revealed. Ooh, good oh, good blink. They have the X though, and the torrent will follow up as well. Snowball not able to get off in time. They have the silence, and here comes HFN, who just blows him away. With that pick, maybe they can try to focus on a tower, but it's it's just the tusk, and they have to push out mid and top anyway, so perhaps not. Yeah, just gonna play the lane control game, I think. If, if you're building these Midases, it definitely does not feel like you're you're in that much of a rush. 
probably waiting around for some more Roshans, like, just kind of, kind of chilling. In terms of map control, they do still have the advantage since the, I mean, this, this tier one is still up bottom. Not a hugely significant tower, but still gives them a little bit more access over into the, the Radiant Jungle. Um, the, the weird thing about HFN's build to me is that he's gone for the Midas and now he's going back for a BKB. So on the one hand, you have this item which is like, oh yeah, I want to I wanna go late and I want to scale and, and do all this kind of thing. And then he's buying his BKB really early. And uh, as soon as his BKB is down to five seconds this game, I think it gets ridiculously difficult for him. You know, there's going to be Tornado, there's going to be Deafening Blast. Right. He's going to get kited around in circles by Gale and Swap and Force Stabs and, and all that kind of stuff. So. Oh my god, Tavo is getting blown away by Pepita. That was solo until just now, and Tavo is probably still going to die. Sunstrike comes out, they even get Duster elsewhere. Tavo getting run down. They're going to use the Exorcism. They want the Venge, they'll find it. So it'll be a two for one. Can they find anybody else? And they have the Ghost Walk. They will see Schofield, who will blink himself into the tree line. No TP, by the way, so if they continue on... Ooh, that Torrent just missing. I think they might just... And they use the Exorcism, too, so... They're not going to find anything with this unless Stinger walks to the low ground here, and even then, I, I don't think they're going to get anything done. Yeah, he's just holding the choke point. We got the 21-minute Midas on the Abaddon. Venge did end up just going for the Shadow Blade at the end of the day. Which you liked, uh, right? Was... Yeah, I like the Shadow Blade. I think it's the the right kind of decision. I, I, I find this, the Midas decisions from Midas Elite really, really quite strange. Maybe it'll, maybe they have a better read on like the, the ultra late game, but I, I feel as though I prefer Infamous's late game setup. Even the Ventral Spirits, I think, even though she's only got 6.4k net worth at the moment, all they need to do is like win one or two fights and They'll catch the Venge right back up. And they're actually going out for a smoke right this second. They do not have the Invoker with them. So this, this is, is right around of... Roche, too. That's yeah. what they're setting up for, I think. And here we go. Yeah, definitely. Shadowblade, but there's case. a Sentry here. They're going to back up. HFN is able to get out and away quickly enough. And they just want to get together as five um, and try to fight for... They're going to go for a smoke. Oh, yeah. Wow. Smoke coming out of the Kunkka's backpack right this second. I mean, I, it really comes down... Like, they... Roche is, I think, a huge objective in, in the next few minutes. One would mm -hmm. assume. Um, so, if, if one team could get it, then all of a sudden you've given yourself either a longer lease on life or a chance to get in and push these towers a bit quicker than perhaps they would have otherwise. And they will take down this uh, ice shard. Yeah, they'll get it. Okay. Yeah, I, I think a big part of what's happening uh, right now is that Neither team feels like they have the clear team fight superiority, especially because of some of the, the item builds and, and whatnot. So it's really difficult for them to say, okay, if we force a five on five right now, we definitely win. It, it's not that kind of a game where, you know, one team has, say, like an Enigma and another big AoE team fight hero, and they just know that a five on five clash is always going to go their way. In, in this game, it's a little bit trickier because. Like we talked about with the nature of Ursa as a hero in this game, either he's going to blink in and obliterate like one or two heroes and then the fight is just over, or he's going to blink in and then just do nothing and he's going to get kited for the whole fight. So the both teams are posturing a lot to try and get that pick off to guarantee the Roshan, which will give them the guaranteed team fight oh, that they're kind of looking Jesus for. Jesus, Stinger. Man, he needs a four staff so badly. It's a problem. Sure. Yeah, I think he might actually... Is it on the courier? He doesn't have it on quick fight. Yeah, it's actually... It's finished and it's on the courier. Oh. He was seconds away from having it, but poor guy. So, can you get into Roche with this? Oh, they need a sentry. They don't have one down. Exorcism. Venge is going to walk right in. They still don't see him. They're going to back up and away. They might get this tower. The Exorcism is going to work. The Sunstrike will hit on Tavo. A lot of damage. He does have borrowed time, but he will be able to back up. In the meantime, the CM, Freezing Field, split pushing top at this point. <laughs> I mean, you got to do what you got to do, I guess. And, oh, Did no! The TP? the TP, it gets canceled. The Yules comes out. Mandy's going to get this kill, but now maybe you can fight elsewhere. They're looking for Tavo, who is incredibly low, by the way. He's already got the borrowed time. They dust up. They're going to fight Excel. They get the Aegis as well. Magic Missile coming out the telekinesis along with plenty of damage from HFN. They get two. Can they get more? Tavo solo. Sunstrike will miss. HFN is on the hunt. The Claws looking for some meat. They can't quite find it. He'll drop down the wind lace. DD Bruin will be picked up by Stinger now with his four staff, but that is a great turn of events for Midas Complete, who now, by the way, have a 4k gold lead. Yeah, interesting, interesting turn of events there for Infamous. It kind of 
half seemed like they wanted to take this fight at mid, but again, I think it comes back to that lack of confidence in neither team really knowing if they have the, the clear 5-on-5 five five advantage. Uh, I, I could see what the eventual spirit was going for, kind of hanging around, waiting for the fight to split up. Maybe they were trying to wait out the exorcism and then engage in after that, but just ended up being pretty scrappy and didn't really get that much done. Meanwhile, Pepita's just been farming, still still pushing away, but he's actually behind the Ursa now in terms of net worth, which I find a little bit surprising. Ur Ursa not exactly uh, you know renowned for his flash farm capabilities, but right. seems to be doing pretty well. That or maybe Pepita just hasn't been farming as hard as he would like, oh. since there isn't a whole lot of vision for him here. Ex so. Jesus, this is... Vengeful Spirit is probably dead. is almost over. No, 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 no chance. No chance. Ah, good try, though, from uh, the Venge to get out, but you're right about HFN, though. I mean, he's had a heck of a series. You go back to the Terror Blade, yeah. which he played mid. Uh, he's obviously a safe lane player more than anything, but he did a really good job in the mid lane. And they're going to look for Tabo. Ice Shards will miss, and this is a deep dive. He's going to have Fodic Shield here in a moment. They're going to try to go for the Sun Strike. It's going to be close. Does he have borrowed time? He doesn't. Nope. He'll fall, but they're in deep. They've got the Torrent. They've got the Dust. They're going to fight for Peter. They need this kill. Can they get it? The Spirit Siphon coming out. The Yule Scepter will keep him open alive for now, but it shouldn't be enough. That is a giant trade. I don't think Tabo is concerned at all. Wow. And at the same time, Split Pushing Crystal Maiden continues. Just trying to buy more space. Uh, at the very least, they dragged them all the way over onto the dive side of the map. Oh, uh, no, CM. Oh, she's probably fine, actually. Nope, just kidding. Here comes Agent Fender, no, you're dead. No. Oh. Big angry bear on his way. X marks coming out. Canceling the Earthshock. Now we'll use it. See ya. Well, all of a sudden, man, I mean, yeah, you got Tavo there, but... I guess what the good thing is from Infamous is that they are split pushing. They're keeping these waves pushed out. They're making it very hard for HFN and crew to get into this tier three or to get to the tier two top lane. That's the good news, but they are still losing a bit of gold here as they lose a couple of heroes across the map. Yeah. Play for those level 25s. The triple plague wards. The tornado. <laughs> Make your high ground just unbreakable. Dude, that plague ward talent is disgusting, by the way. Yeah, it's gross. Oh. Uh, what are we doing he here? has Aegis. I don't know if this is the right yeah, play. Let's... Swap. Scofield will save his life coming out. BKB comes in. They'll jump forward. Another Earth Shock. And they really want this kill. Plague Ward's getting dropped down. Mask Madness will find it. Can he find more? Scofield. I, I don't know about this. This is dangerous. Ice Shard's coming out. Poison Nova. BKB's pop for Mandy. This fight is turning disastrous. The CM will come in. I think she has Freezing Field. She might use it. Good Tornado. Will take down. Looks like the Rubik. Yes. But the Aegis is now up there looking for more of the X Marks. Poor Excel looks like he's going to fall again. Ooh, maybe not. Good save with that snowball coming in. Cripstorm coming out, and they're going to blow this man away. Uh, CM is going to get dropped yet again, and Pepita can only watch as they lose three or four heroes, and uh, that's not great. They're going to try to chase with Pepita, though. They're kind of looking for this, this 2v3. Ooh, but... this could be good. Spirit Siphon's available, but ah, he's in trouble. Good silence coming out, but the stun from the Spirit Siphon should be more than enough, and they just didn't have the bad Nephotic Shield as... Bad in the split pushing bottom and yeah, uh, he was just bought that entire time. <laughs> that's great, classic of bad stuff. And it, it was a 6k advantage at the end of that fight until they got the kill on Mandy, then it turned back to 4k. So the good news mm -hmm. is Pepita continues to, to get farm, he's up now top of the net worth. But the bad news is, is that your Ursa is on the other side, is very farmed, he's got a Deso, they got a couple of kills, the Death Prophet is back in it after being pretty out of it for most of the game. And they're going to maybe try to find Pepita here in a moment. But this could be trouble. He's in the side lane. They're going to look for Schofield instead. Blank, they just miss him. And Pepita is going to go down rather up to the north. And Schofield will ice shard in the river. And they won't get either. So very close, but no Sakaar. Yeah, and so the split push from the Invoker is starting to become more annoying. And my read on this game is that this is actually Midas Elite's like strongest timing right now with the kind of the two 10 second BKBs. I guess you wait around for the... The, the Abaddon's still going to scale a lot, and that's just kind of the nature of Abaddon as a hero. Even after he gets the Radiance, there's still plenty of room for him to grow. And we were talking about disgusting level 25 talents a little bit earlier, and the Abaddon plus 300 aphotic shield health is definitely <laughs> up there as well on the disgusting talent list. It's pretty gross. But yeah, I, I don't know. I, just, I feel like this Ursa and Death Prophet, they are hitting their their peak right now. The Exorcism level 3 is already picked up, so Death Prophet's damage potential is already kind of 
maxed out and I I worry that the, as this game goes on, I don't know if it gets that much better for them. Though the, the Venge and the Venomancer continue to lag really far behind. So maybe that's where uh, Infamous aren't actually looking as good late game as you might expect from looking at their heroes because they're actually... It's kind of just the Pepita show for now. And if he gets his face torn off by Ursa, then they're in big trouble. They are pulling them around the map. Infamous is, is still doing that and gives room to this Vengeful Spirit. I mean, how good is Venge as a late game core anyway? Let's just say all things even. Is Venge really going to be that strong or, or I don't know. How good is Venge here in the uh, later stages of this game? Uh, I think Venge is like a surprisingly good late game hero. Uh, her, her talents are fairly solid. I mean, the, the Vengeance aura damage is good. I think the biggest thing this game is just the Vengeful Spirit as a way to keep the Invoker safe. So that if the Invoker ever gets jumped on, let's say Abyssal Blade gets picked up on Ursa, or they get like a Hex on the Death Prophet, then they've always got, assuming that the Vengeful Spirit is playing it right, then they've always got that way to save Pepita. And if Pepita is the Invoker player that I think he is, this is the kind of game where he can potentially 1v5 a team fight. Like, he can kill everybody, he can do all the damage, he just needs to not get killed off, and that's where he relies on his team with Snowball saves, Swap saves, Force Staff saves, that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm with you. He could... He could easily take over this game. It's just going to be a question of can they keep the waves pushed out? Can they take a, the correct fight? I think another big part of this game is going to be Roshan, as it usually is. Um, when that's mm -hmm. back up, I think that's when things get a bit more interesting. They've got to keep this top wave pushed out, though. Like you talked about, the Invoker is becoming increasingly hard to deal with in this top lane when he's pushing it out. So It's not easy for Midas Kabuli to even get to high ground, let alone to do any damage to it at this point. Yeah, and we've talked heavily about the Venomancer and the Invoker and their strength is a oop. This is a bait. Death Prophet just taking huge damage. This is damage. a bait. It's a bait. Spirit Siphon coming out. A lot of damage being done, though. The Ghost Wall comes in. They need dust. They'll find it, but he should be able to get out. HFN on the hunt. They are going to have the vision. Good Walrus Punch. They'll instead turn onto Schofield. He will give his life for Pepita. That is a BKB charge down, and in fact, it was a 10 second BKB charge down. But they will use the Exorcism for it. So that could have been a lot worse for Midas Kabuli, but it still wasn't the best. Yeah, and still one minute to Roshan. Uh, but to finish that, that thought from a little bit earlier, not only are the Venomancer and the Invoker both really good high ground defense heroes, but you have to give some the Ventral Spirit a little bit of credit as well. Uh, especially once you've got your max range Nether Swap, getting swapped into Tier Four towers, where there can where there you know there might already be an Ice Wall waiting. That's scary if it's, you're yeah. Midas Elite because they don't have. Like, once they have the Blink Dagger on the Abaddon, maybe they can help out a little bit, because then the Abaddon can go blinking in and, and try and save. But uh, the Ventral Spirit is also a really good high ground defense hero in her in her own right. So the most important thing for Midas Elite is to try and win a fight outside of the base, I would Ooh. say. Oh, Death Prophet again, but it's not a bait this time. Now this time it's going to be a kill. TP's coming back. They're going to jump in. They've oh. got the dust. He's no BKB. And that is almost worth it. In fact, it might just be straight yep. worth it here for Midas Club Elite. 100%. That is, that is huge. They gotta, the question is now, what can they get out of this? They can't lose King RD, he's in deep. X Marks will come in, and he's here alone with Tavo at this point. They've gotta be careful, here comes the Poison Nova. This is a problem, tavo has got the borrowed time. X Marks coming up with the Snowball, he will avoid the Torrent in the meantime. Ghost Ship coming in, is it gonna hit? It misses on everybody! There's the CM using the Freezing Field, could be huge! Warriors Punch comes out, they will take down the CM. King RD is on the run, he had the Shadow Amulet oh, going. the Gale. Oh my They're god, here, so. King RD. Nice shards will connect. HFN, BKB swapped up. He's in trouble. A lot of damage being done. And he won't even get the kill. Oh. It's a triple kill. What happened? Midas Kabalit, it felt like you had that fight. Unbelievable. I mean, it was a it was a 4v3 to begin with. And then I think Infamous just kited that fight so nicely. Uh, the biggest play in that whole fight was the Venomancer just spotting the Ursa on the Plague Lord Vision up on the high ground through the Gale, hit the Gale on the very edge, like the very tip of the Gale, and then Ursa was completely useless for the remainder of the fight. And uh, great response from oh. them to punish. He's oh. going in. I cannot believe this. Mandy, this is a lot of damage. They have the Solar Crest up on the Ventral Spirit. She will Shadow Blade away. It pushes them out of the Roche Pit, but there's still 30 seconds without your biggest damage dealer in the Earth. And now Pepita is up and ready to go. I, I don't know if you can try to take this fight. Freezing Field was stolen, by the way. He didn't get another spell out, out in the meantime. 
But I think it's too little too late. I think they're going to have Roche easily. In fact, they will. And that's Aegis and Cheese picked up for Infamous. And that is a giant turnaround fight. They might find Schofield. They'll pop the Freezing Field. He's got the Snowball. It'll keep him alive for a moment. But even so, they don't really Blink care away. about this death. They're going to find no. him. One attack, maybe? Yes. Uh, okay, they got the gem back. So that was the other really big thing about that last fight is that King RD lost the gem. But at least they managed to claim that back pretty quickly. But... I don't know, Maud. I'm starting to worry. I feel like the, you know, I've been saying it the whole game, but the Ursa should be getting to the point now where it's he's fairly easy to control in these fights. We're starting to see stuff like the Solar Crest on the Venomancer is really annoying for him to deal with. Uh, the Ventral Spirit is starting to become a pretty scary right clicker in her own right, and Ooh. this is this is where I thought that the the Midas was a bad decision because he doesn't really need it. Can you, should be able to blink away, right? Ooh, tornado. Tabo is in a lot of trouble. Cold snap, a photic shield, good tornado to keep him controlled. He almost was able to get out, but that that's another huge kill. But uh, you are right; they are really controlling. Pepita wasn't even really there for that last fight, you know, over towards their like triangle camp area, which they won five for like one or two. And, and this yeah. is where we were talking about the Veno and the Venge getting scary. Like, if they could get to this late-stage situation, if the Invoker could make enough room. And I was doubting how strong they were going to be, but the Venge pumps out a lot of damage now. And uh, so does the Veno, and he, he's more about control even. So it's very, very frightening here for them to try to take a fight. HFN, Magic Missile, good in Rage. X marks, they've got the Ghost Ship coming out with the Torrent. Manta style, Ghost Ship will hit onto two. There's the BKB, Venge in trouble. They've got the Telekinesis, Schofield getting run down as well in the back lines. Pepita is going in. I don't know if they can take this fight. Pepita can 1v5, like you said before. They've got two kills, can they get more? HFN dropping low, the Gale, the Poison Sting. They're gonna find him, he's gonna get the Enrage off. The Tornado will come through, he will fall. That's three dead, can Pepita get any more? King RD on the run, and uh, He's going to use the Shadow Amulet. He does not want to lose this gem. He actually is going to go for the TP right now. They need the Cold Snap. The oh. Eagles instead comes out, and that will get this gem back in favor of Infamous. More than likely, King RD will try to go for another play there using that. Uh... Well, it's not going to work, sadly. Yeah. Glimmer Cape, not enough. And Pepita straight over to the mid lane. Going to be able to force things pretty heavily here. I don't think the buyback should be forced out, but... Midas Elite just not even close to winning teamfights at this stage. The the Ursa getting kited around in circles did almost no damage in that last fight. Uh, I, I don't know what they do. I, I think I really think buying the double Midas or the what yeah double Midas on the Ursa uh, Abaddon was a really strange decision because yeah. uh, we'll we'll see. Maybe maybe they're right. Maybe there's still like another peak coming up where the. Invoker's kind of capped and they, they managed to pick up some more controlling items like they get the Abyssal Blade on the Ursa and they get a uh, Maybe a Scythe on the Abaddon or the Death Prophet and that's where Abaddon goes blinking in He hexes some guy and then you know the, the fight turns uh, Turns out a little bit better, but like we've been saying there's all this save on infamous. They've got the swap. They've got the snowball uh, They've got a bunch of four stabs, so I'm not even convinced about about that angle yeah, I mean, this is what you want to try to blow people up with this Ursa, but with all those saves, like you mentioned, yep. it's it's very tough. Um, and I'm going back to your point about the peaks and, and things of that nature. Right? It's hard to see because the BKBs get smaller as the game progresses. Yep. And then the Invoker, of course, his level 25 talent, which she is holding, which we'll see what that is. But uh, I'm excited to see. Like, minus 18 second tornado cooldown is pretty ridiculous. So is the AoE Deafening Blast, don't get me wrong. But... Either, either of those talents allows you so much more control, and uh, it makes team fights even more impossible for Midas Cup Elite at this point. Oh, yeah. I, the weirdest thing for me with Midas Cup Elite buying the Midas is that they bought the Midases and then they immediately bought BKBs right after that. So, Oh, like HFN is in trouble. Although they will find mm. Schofield, it might be time to back. They're going to look for Pepita, who, by the way, has Aegis. He'll just ghost walked away. He's just very, very speedy. They have the gem now. Exorcism is still available. They're looking for an X Marks or a Torrent, perhaps, but they can't find it. I think you need to be careful if you're infamous here. You don't want to give anything away. You have an 8K lead, which can easily get dropped pretty quickly if you're not careful. And they will do the smart thing and back up. But what can Lettuce Club Elite do now in this 60 second span where it's a 4 versus 5? They will smoke. Pepita is the perfect target, but again, he has Aegis, he has BKB. This is not going to be easy. They've got the telekinesis. They'll find the first life, but the second life is going to be the tough one. 
They're going to pop the exorcism. He might be able to just blink out at this point. Crypt Swarm comes in. The Ghost Walk will come. They need to chase him down with the BKB. It's just so hard. They're going to jump in. BKB is still going for another moment or, he, or, or two, but I think he's gone. I, I just... He is too speedy. In the meantime, the Veno is pushing your bottom lane. And, uh... Ah, they commit so much just to get the Invokers, Aegis, and BKB. Although, they might find this Vengeful Spirit. They have the gem on Mandy. He's in trouble. Magic Missile will come out. He's going to get blown away. No, the Cheese comes in. The Poison Nova. Here comes the Meatball and Sunstrike as well. The Deafening Blast AoE coming out. The he on top of it all as well. But it will be nobody dying, perhaps. It looks like they should all get away. It's going to be close to CM's looking for a target. Trying to find Tavo the Shrine coming out. Tavo might be able to survive. He's going to try to run in the meantime. King RD getting blown away even through the Glimmer Cave. Oh. And they find the huge tornado. They're going to turn looking for Pepita. The Yule Scepter will keep him alive. Here comes the Ghost Ship. It might not be in time. One more auto attack. They get the kill. Now they have no Invoker for 90. He does have buyback. They've got the Telekinesis, Vengeful Spirit. No cheese to save him this time. But they need more damage. It's just these three heroes. And the Ursa is trying to find the back line. And Mandy will fall. Triple kill coming out for Kotaro. They've got four. They did buy back up on that Invoker. And that will secure them everybody. And two buybacks on top of it. Woo. Well, that was hype. Yeah, this, I mean, pretty big investment going for the Invoker buyback. Infamous just gonna. They're gonna, they're gonna cut really deep. There's only two alive. Exorcism down for 30. Ursa does have his BKB back up, but they don't have the lockdown. They really need that blink lift from the Rubik to be able to find any of these kills. And looks like this should just be straight up two lanes of Rax. And then Infamous probably go take all the shrines, wait around for the Roshan, or at least wait for the Invoker buyback to come back up. And then should be able to close the game out from there. Are they even going to go for Megas? They might. Only 15 seconds. 20 seconds. If they lose, if they lose Pepita, it's so dangerous. Yeah, That's exactly. The this is the smarter play for sure. Rosh isn't up yet. I mean, that's the one way Midas could win this game, is if they could kill Pepita uh, with him and not having buyback. But I just don't see that happening now, especially since they backed up. So Midas could lead. It, it felt like they had this game, and it comes down to maybe questions of itemization. We could talk about it for days. But at the end of the day, Infamous, they just had a great start for Pepita. They had all of the saves, a very good draft to work with, and then these cores finally hit their peak with this Venge and this Venomancer really helping out in these fights. Yeah, I... I I think Midas Elite were kind of in this weird, uh, like, damned if you do, damned if you don't situation, because they were probably looking at it and telling themselves, like, oh, well, we're not far enough ahead to go and snowball and break the high ground the way that we want to. We know that we can't end the game quickly, so what other option do we have available to us? I guess we'll we'll try out the late game. We'll see how that, what that looks like. But I think just the nature of the matchups, the, the late game is not... Uh, yeah, it doesn't really rival Infamous's all that well. They do have a DD on this Ursa, so... Oh, he'll be able to blow some somebody up. there. Yeah. Short of the evasion kicking in, but, uh... Yeah, they're just gonna back. Roche is up in 35 seconds, and if Midas Kabli want to have any chance at taking this game, they need to get Aegis and Cheese. They really cannot afford they, to get there's, there's no way that they can get Roche. If Infamous play it right, they just, they just wait for the two Rax planes to push, and then... That they can't ever get over to the pit. There should be no way for Midas Elite to contest Roshan at this stage. Right. But you give away Rosh, you give Aegis and Cheese away, and all of a sudden, how do you win? You, you can't. <laughs> I think this. I think the game is... If if Infamous play it right from here, I think the game is, is already over. The, the only thing that they have is a... Like, I think a crazy three-man smoke or something to go and find the Invoker. So you smoke maybe... Let's say the Rubik, Ursa, plus any one other hero. And you have to just show the other heroes on lanes to keep them shoved out. And then try and figure out where the Invoker is going and, and kill him off. And that's the only way that you can secure Roshan. You can't, you can't play the game where you're both just standing at the pit staring at each other. Because that's never going to work. So they have to get that, uh, that pick off on Pepita. But he, he realizes that as well. So I don't think he's going to be still pushing nearly as hard as... Uh, you might see him otherwise if he still had his, his buyback available. And if, if he does split push, he's going to have backup behind him nine times out of ten, I feel like. Uh, just to yeah, make that's, sure. Yeah, that's the other thing. But we'll see. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a tough position. They're going to try to find the CM, but she's able to get out. They'll find the illusions instead. 
Roshan is up, by the way. They have top pushing in. They do push out mid and bottom, so the lanes with uh, no racks are pushed out. This is the best chance they're going to have at a team fight. It looks like they're going to find Kotaro. He's going to get jumped on. The BKB will go. Good force. He's got swap available, but the bash comes out, and they will get the kill. He's dead for 99. No buyback either. Snowball away. Nicely done from Schofield, but they need to get back because guess who's there? It's the Venomancer pushing in. The uh, Death Prophet will go for the Veno. In fact, Shiva's Guard will go. Spirit Siphon as well. They're really committing. They want this kill. They do get the Tier 3 Tower, but the Veno will, in fact, drop. He does have buyback. And that should... Uh, I don't know how much... Can they even get this Roshan now? They've got these two kills. Maybe they'll find the CM. X marks. Wow, that blink just in time from Excel. <laughs> My lord. That, that X marks animation was so close to, to finishing. Okay. Well... Midas Elite, can they take the Roshan for themselves? Looks like that's going to be the attempted plan. Uh, he's going to lose all of his mana. Yep, EHFN's mana is just gone. They have no shrine to get it back. They give him Arcane Boots. doesn't really do anything. And, uh, well, Pepita's just got to split push top. They have Boots of Travel now for the Abaddon, which is huge. It allows them to keep these waves pushed out. They'll have Mandy probably coming in. They X marks the Ursa back, trying to get some mana. He will get a little bit. But it's, it's 30 seconds before this Venge is up, and they have buyback on the Venom, so they need to be careful here. All right. Yeah. Well, can they do the improbable is the question. I mean, they are... There's just so much spam to throw into the pit. They have to find kills. I don't know if they can just force the, the rush. Oh, Sam. Ooh, forced away in time. They're looking for Schofield. Silenced up. Ice Shards. There's the deafening blast. EMP coming out as well. Pops the blade mail. The Abaddon does. Sunstrike coming out. Venno's back up at 13. They can't even force the buyback. They just have to back away. Like you mentioned, the spam is too heavy. It, it's just impossible. And the very good news for Infamous is they just found a double damage for Venge, who already hits like a fucking truck. So, okay. That's great. <laughs> yeah, plus, plus 390. Let's, <laughs> let's see this. Oh, HFN's just got to oh. come in, though. Uh, does he want CM? He's got the Abyssal. Do they have Vision? Did they? No. They, like, blinked away. Oh, they have a gem for the CM. Well, that makes sense. All right. Uh, it's, a, it's a weird place to try and commit for a fight. And Infamous have already shown that they're willing to just go and take Megas this if you take a fight in a bad place. Mandy is in a lot of trouble. Hit him. And the Yule Scepter will keep him alive for only a moment longer. I don't... Oh! The Blink away! Ooh. He's able to make it out, but he's already low. The Poison Nova. Mandy will go for the TP. Here's the Abyssal Blade coming out. They will find Mandy dead for two minutes. The Venna will get, in, get killed in turn. If they could find Schofield, maybe this is good. But again, top lane. Pete is just taking racks, and they have to run back. I, I think this might be the beginning of the end here. They're, like, splitting up the fight into two different areas. They're going to lose both Roche and the Rubik, and uh, no buyback on your Death Prophet. Uh, it looks like she's dead forever. Actually, it's back up in a minute, so that's good, but... Uh, not well, good enough. Yeah, they're, they're splitting the fight. They're winning the 4v5. They're kiting the Ursa around, and now they're actually going to put all their forces together with the Aegis and the Cheese. Tavo may be in trouble here. A Photic Shield will come out. There's the Deafening Blast. The Ghost Ship will come in. He is getting low, but he does have the borrowed time. Meanwhile, looking for Pepita. HFN just can't lock him down. Now he'll turn to Singer. He just can't find a target to work on at this point. The Ice Wall will get dropped down. He's slow doing Oblivion. The Yules will come out. The Meatball will get dropped. He'll get hexed up as well. Forced away. They've got the Glimmer Cape, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Right now, Infamous are just overrunning Midas Elite. They still don't have... Their death profit. They're all so low. They've got the root from the frostbite. They just get the ages down, but that's it. They're gonna lose King RD. Four dead, and that should be it. GG is called an infamous, a long-winded game too, but a perfect fight there. And these past few minutes for them and getting this game done. I think their their lineup worked out exactly the way that they were planning for it too. They got the farm on the invoker. They shut down the Death Prophet a little bit early. They kind of locked into this cycle where they were just split pushing all the time. We, we were seeing the Venomancer get picked off, but it just didn't really matter, right? The, the Veno would die, but then the Invoker would be shoving a lane somewhere else. I think the, the, the biggest thing for me is looking at the Ventral Spirit and that there was, this, there was this struggle about, do I get Midas? Do I get Shadow Blade? Do I get Midas? And I, I would hope that somebody inside the Infamous lineup is like, look, we just we win this late game no matter what. Just just do whatever we can to hold on through the mid game and trust Pepita's invoker to do Pepita invoker things and, and close out the game. And I think that's exactly 
what happened. I really don't know what Midas Elite could have done differently. I think even if they changed the item builds, they would have stalled out just before the high ground and probably would have been the, the same result. Good attempt there from Midas Club Elite. We will take a quick break. We'll move into our third game.